Hey, this is Witty. Welcome to a replay being casted by myself and Andy, otherwise known as I Train Hum. Hume? Is it I Train Hume or Hum? It's what? I Train Hume. Hi, Hume. everyone. Uh, as Witty just mentioned, um, I used to cast uh, replays on my own channel, I Train Hume, on uh, YouTube. And if you enjoy this, uh, you can find a lot more of this on my channel. And also recently some uh, first person uh, view VODs of me playing. So if you want to see the Warcraft free replays, he's a very good caster, so we'll have links to that in the description and probably on the video as well. I still feel like calling you Hum though. <laughs> you can call me Andy. Andy. Andy it is. Right then, Andy. We're both sat at this 10 second mark, so shall we... Uh, I hope Skype doesn't have too much delay, otherwise <laughs> we might be slightly off here, but I'll no. count three, two, one, and then when I say go, click okay. the unpause. Is that all right? Yeah, I think I, I can handle it. Yeah, you, you got it. All right, three, two, one, go. All righty. You want to start us off, Mr. Caster? Yeah, I would uh, love to. So in the bottom left corner in red, with human as usual, we do have the French orc, uh, Todd. You can see him start with a fast altar, which is not at all unusual. On Twisted Meadows, so he's going to go for the Goblin Laboratory creep first. And his opponent on the uh, in the top right corner from the Netherlands in yellow, the Orc player Grubby. So we do here have the probably two most accomplished players from Europe in the history of Warcraft 3. Uh, battling it out in uh, June of 2008 in the Blizzard Worldwide Invitational. I think upper bracket semi-final or something, doesn't matter. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So we're going to have an epic game. Yeah, I hope so. Can I just say for one moment, don't want to put you off your stride or nothing like that, but would we be alright to pause it at 1 minute 25 for example? Alright. So just pause it at 1 minute 25. Boom. All right, technical yes. issues here, people. We are still recording, but I'm just going to whack the sound down a little bit more just to make sure that it's not overtaking anything because we want to hear you in all your caster glory. That should be fine. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's It's, my, that's a, it's a dual caster, so... Oh, yeah, but, you know, I just spray <laughs> words out of my mouth and whatever order they come out is whatever order they come out you can hear how coherent I sound right now so yeah there you <laughs> go all right um I'll do another three two one go countdown I know you like those so three two one go all right so we are back so it looks like we've got Archmage being built by Todd at the bottom left and Grubby's doing his scout towards the top left with his Oh, Farseer and Grunt. What do you think about the Farseer over the Blademaster? I suppose it's back in 2008. Do you remember the differences? Uh, yeah, I think in 2008 it was still a little bit more common uh, compared to nowadays, but the Blademaster was still um, a lot more uh, favored. But Grubby used to do this a lot, uh, especially on Twisted Meadows. I think in one of his commentaries he also uh, casted a game on Twisted Meadows where he does the, the same thing. And the point is just uh, distraction early on instead of um, you know getting the wacky blade master which people do nowadays it's it's all about distraction because a player of uh, Todd's caliber is not very likely to actually get in trouble early on yeah but uh, we'll see Grubby is now scouting the bottom with his wolves and uh, he's now gonna find Todd in uh, cross spawn and there he's gonna try to uh, keep him as occupied as possible Fun to see even back then these guys had this sort of strategy down sussed where the human players go straight off and creep up the uh, goblin laboratory and uh, the orc just wants to find him as fast as possible. Cross spawn is definitely a little bit tricky for Grubby but looks like he's going to try to recover for that and do some harass. Yeah, so uh, as we can see Todd, um, he has lost one uh, peasant at the uh, goblin laboratory which is unfortunate but it can happen and uh, yeah Todd is very unlikely to actually lose any more units here against this harass but um, if Grubby can force the uh, mil uh, militia a couple of times and just uh, get a bit of take advantage he should be already quite satisfied with this early game 
I'm counting about coming up to looks like nine or ten peasants. Do you think Todd's going to try for a fast expansion, or is he still going to tech first? What do you um, think that sort of means? Because that seems like I, a lot of peasants on wood. Yeah, I think uh, Todd is very unlikely to actually go for a fast expansion. I mean, he, like, looking at Todd as a player, he always used to do uh, these uh, tier two pushes against human with a pretty big success, and uh, maybe he's just. Yeah, already preparing for a tier 2 push with a lot of peons, with uh, uh, peasants to just have the lumber to back up, uh, you know, towers in front of the opponent's base. Yeah, Grubby just uh, missed out there on the water elemental kill by the looks of it, which is a real shame because he worked that one down and then it just ran out as it's like one or two more hits away from dying. But he does manage to steal this creep camp away from uh, Todd, so Todd looks like he's under a little bit of control despite him having a rather powerful army. That fast is just such a hindrance to the human, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, as you can see, Grubby decided to get a warm mill before he started his tech. So uh, he delayed his tech by a little bit there. And uh, he's still a little bit ahead of Todd. Uh, but the point behind this is, which also Grubby did a lot, um, is to get the um, watchtower up before Todd can actually put pressure against the alt base with a level 3 arc match. Yeah. Because the issue with the fast here, if uh, you asked it in the beginning compared to uh, the Blade Master, is that he's having uh, trouble fighting straight up, especially in the beginning, and that tower is just a huge support to um, yeah, circumvent getting all the Buros killed by uh, water elementals. Yeah, I mean, from my experience, what little it is of the one versus one brackets in replays and such, human are very powerful. They build up those footmen, they get the Archmage to level 3 ASAP, and then they go and hit the Orcs, if they're against Orcs, as fast as possible, because that's roughly about the same time the Orc actually finishes tech, and it just really slows down their tech when the humans are almost sacrificing footmen just to make sure that those buildings don't go up. Do you think that's worthwhile, like sacrificing? How many footmen would you sacrifice to try to get those buildings down? Uh, it uh, really depends on the follow-up, because like if you if you get um, a Beastmaster um, to accompany the push, then it's okay to lose quite a couple of uh, of peasants to delay the Orcs tech, because um, the Beastmaster is usually played uh, together with uh, the human casters, which come rather fast because of uh, fast build on Arcanes, and you just don't want to have the Ensnare and the um, um, Disenchant yeah. against that. But if you, for example, uh, go for a fire lord immediately, then uh, you don't have the caster support, and then you slowly want to chew uh, the orc base away instead of wasting all your footmen here. Hmm. I like the items on this archmage. I assume he is, yeah, he is getting a mountain king as his second hero. No, he's cancelled actually. He's gone for beastmaster, so he can carry on this yeah. push here. But he's got that um, belt of giant strength plus six, which is going to be yeah. very nice for the beastmaster. Give him a little bit more survivability to stay in there, do a bit more tanking, and. Uh, yeah. Looks like he's actually potentially going to go for an expansion here. That's just the impression I'm getting. The way he's moving in that direction down below. He's got the two arcane sanctums going up. But would he be cheeky enough to go for an expansion? I don't know if he'd be pushing his luck point that, past that point. Yeah, I think it's... Um, what we see right now is a result of uh, the early game. Uh, Todd's push was had a little bit of a weird timing. Uh, he caught Grubby off guard and uh, got two grunts killed. But... Um, he actually was low HP on his arc match and a couple of footmen when uh, Gravi's tier 2 buildings came and therefore he couldn't really do anything about those. Mm -hmm. And Gravi is now going to get them through but uh, yeah, with two water mantles and two cool beasts in front of his base it's still... It's going to um, be a bit rough to defend. Yeah, it's going to be a bit rough. But as you tower, mentioned, uh, tower yeah, helps. getting that tower up earlier is a really good job there from Grubby because it's just that ever presence of defensive threat, you know. When they try to come in, having that tower there is going to be so nice. The peons are all nearby. They can easily get there in time to defend if he's ready to do it. Yeah. It's like he's dealing with one of the yeah. Quill Beasts, but the human's coming in strong here yeah. on the burrow, but there's some good repair action going on there. Yeah, but that burrow is going to fall. And Grubby, he can't... Oh, that was nice by Grubby. Um, he actually, he didn't have the lumber to build a spirit walker and those are so essential and he just cancelled the ensnare upgrade and built a spirit walker before his burrow went down because um, yeah, Gravi just knows how important those uh, spirit walkers are going to be in the next um, yeah, couple of minutes. Definitely, but they take time to build so up, going, that's the issue. You gotta he's going for the beast wall. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah, it's a lovely little finish move there on the beast master, but he can't escape the slow so he's teleporting out of it. 
but he's in a good position to get himself back to base even after being slowed. Maybe the Tauran Chief or something wants to pick up a couple of healing cells. Oh, actually, no, they've got the speed back. Farseer doesn't last long with slow, but he's going to want to make the most out of this shot before it goes down, if it goes down. It's a bit of pressure here coming in from uh, Todd. But, yeah, Gravi's army is actually pretty big, and Todd is bringing militia, no? Hmm. Uh, Grubby's army is actually pretty big. I'm curious if Todd is going to be able to block uh, Grubby away from uh, from his casters. But if those militia arrive in time, Todd might have a might have a shot here. It does look like the army sizes are relatively even, and Todd doesn't actually have a second hero just yet. So you would have thought, unless his resources are yeah, his resources are. Oh no! So there's the Beastmaster, he's coming through now, he's just built him now. He's got the Beastmaster on his way, coming up here to try and do some damage. The Militia are just waiting to come out of that Militia form, start getting those towers down. Maybe even a shop would be nice. But, uh, yeah, Grubby is perfectly seeing this uh, left flank uh, being open, and it seems like he's going to run through on this uh, weak part of Todd's army. Now with the Spirit Link, which as mentioned is totally essential in those fights, and uh, yeah, the, uh, the peasants haven't really been able to block uh, Grubby away and I think Krabi has just done a great job of uh, getting into this engagement. He does look like that even though under heavy pressure he's really keeping control of the situation yeah. as you mentioned with the ensnares on the priests and the sorks yeah. just surrounding those castles bringing those down before they can do too much overall damage. He's just uh, he lost one walker his only walker um, mm -hmm. up on the top now so um, yeah that's not too great for him but I think yeah he gets this around on the Archmage that was nice forcing your opponent back in this situation as well is a huge bonus because that's five or six militia there peasants kind of weren't doing anything there really whatsoever wood isn't exactly an issue for Todd but don't really want like those workers there not doing anything not being productive yeah so uh, both the players have lost uh, quite a lot grubby is also only down to three units and is two euros at the moment so uh, despite holding this it's not like he can like do a big counter push or anything at the moment, so I'm guessing they're both just gonna sit back and Todd got the uh, ivory towers on his Beastmaster. So now he might just go for that expansion you mentioned earlier. Ah, it's about time. I'm a greedy player, so I'm always going for the expansions. It's like, oh, when can I take an expansion? Is uh, 30 seconds into the game too early? <laughs> it's a nice touch there, just putting the tower straight up there. I would have thought they might have gone down there, but he actually managed to distract the uh, opponent creeps with uh, his units there, so that actually stopped the uh, towers from being focused. Grubby is scouting uh, the wrong natural expansion of Todd right now, and uh, he's not going to find that expansion uh, just yet. Yeah, that is the one I was suspecting all the time. But it looks like the uh, left side expansion is going to probably be secure, judging on Grubby's position and how fast those towers are going up. Uh, yes, definitely. I'm really uh, curious how Grubby is going to react to that. I mean, for now, you have to notice that Todd is investing into this expansion, and you can see it. He's at 36 supply against 43, and um, he's probably not going to want to engage anytime soon. So yeah, if Grubby gets aggr aggressive here, um, he might still have a, a shot to get a good fight. Yeah, maybe even get on top of his opponent, a few chain lightnings here, shock waves, you know, really keep him under control, which is what Grubby's wanting to do this whole game. It does look like he's got a very nice mixed army here. I always like this about the Orc. It's like this, one of the safest armies. They don't particularly have range units, but the Raiders make up for that with Ensnare, and it's just like these Grunt Raiders Spirit Walkers. You just kind of spam those out and stay at Tier 2, yeah. don't you, generally? Yeah, it's also um, the only really army that works against pretty much every every race, every matchup, except yeah. maybe um, in the very late game against Undead or uh, Human if they get expansion in Griffins. But uh, regularly, um, this is re a really safe uh, unit combination against everything. Yeah, that's one of my favorite um, things about Orc. Is I never liked Orc, but once I started to Please learn how to play them in one versus one, I found, oh, this build kind of just deals with everything. Great. Yeah. I don't have to worry about <laughs> learning too much. Yeah. I can just master this and be okay. Ah, uh, screw scouting. Just get Grant's Raider Walker. Yeah, no need to scout. Unless I want to be really risky and go Torrent Chieftain and Headhunters, which I love that combination, <laughs> but it doesn't actually do all that well in one versus one. So. Yeah. Despite my efforts, despite my attempts, it still gets pretty much crushed. Yeah, those headhunters are just fragile in one on one. I actually so, find. Oh, sorry, go on. I uh, just want to mention both the players going uh, for their red spots now, with uh, Grubby finding probably the worst item uh, 
it's available from the creep spot and Grubby going for a sneaky expansion on the bottom but Todd immediately scouts it. Uh, for those of you who don't know it's also definitely worth mentioning that those players played at uh, 4k, the, maybe the most famous Warcraft team ever together for 2007, 6, for like three and a half years so these players know exactly uh, their habits. Ha their habits, yes. And, yeah. um, that's yeah, funny, obviously. that is. Because that's the tricky thing, is when you play against a friend or something like that, that's kind of... You you get to know how they play, so then you can kind of work out how to counter them. It's almost like having map hack to a degree, because yeah. you I mean, almost know what's coming up. I mean, these players definitely played like a thousand games against each other. Oh, God. So Grabby is now rushing into these towers. I think he maybe should have tried to fight straight up, as his army was still not that small. But he's just yeah going for the expansion. This is a really risky move because he's thrown himself there in front of the yeah. arcane towers, yeah. losing mana during you this. You have to TP, but he killed quite some quite some passes already, and now he chooses to TP. And actually, I think that was pretty neat by Grubby. He lost one Walker and the TP, but um, he killed two towers, which for one leaves this expansion fragile and um, yeah attackable again. Mm. And he forces Todd to really invest a lot in this expansion. I mean, if you look at the gold, there's 11,700 in there, which means Todd mined about 800 gold. And he invested a lot more into that. He lost four peasants now. He's building a fifth tower. He had to build a town hall in power build. So he invested a lot in that. And Grubby sort of just um, yeah delays this expansion really paying off. Yeah, that's one of the things I've noticed as well in some games is getting that expansion first doesn't always pay off if uh, the opponent can basically waste all the gold that you basically spent getting from the, getting that expansion because not only do you make yourself vulnerable by trying to go for it first you can have less of an army size or less power or tech overall but if you have like a bad engagement and lose like a fair few towers or units or peasants you kind of just wasted that gold by having to rebuild those things again and we can see Krubby's coming in here to deal with those yep. towers once more and in the meantime he's getting an expansion on the very opposite side of the map so he's gonna keep Todd away and um, distract him from cancelling that and again he's killing um, a couple of peasants now trying to get the speed scroll out trying but it yeah. is so good that speed scroll isn't it especially if you get away with it it's like 50 gold use that uh, yeah. instead of a town portal nice somehow always if I try to use it all my units are blocking each other and I lose half my <laughs> army. Yeah, Warcraft 3 pathing is a bit like that, but it also is a good thing in a sense because it makes for some epic blocking action going on. Yeah. And Grub is even getting a second expansion on the uh, top left spawn yeah, position now. Yeah, he's and really Todd, going for it. Todd hasn't scouted either of those so far, but uh, yeah, right now I think Todd's expansion is slowly going to start um, being, being worth it. And I think Todd is... Yeah, I think maybe not even getting that far ahead since uh, Grubby's first expansion is now also up. But Grubby is being caught off guard in the middle now and he's gonna lose that walker definitely. And yeah, I think <laughs> nothing more. <laughs> nice surround there. Yeah, that was a nice surround. But we see Todd, he's currently just yeah, sitting at, nice you know, like 54 food here. It's not a great place to be. He's not exactly making a ridiculous amount of resource or gold that yeah. he can actually really plow to 80 food cap. He's getting a bit of a punishment here as well from some raiders from Grubby that aren't really being countered too heavy, countered too heavy by the towers. So nice hit and run there on the shop. And uh, Grubby obviously has uh, pillage researched already and gets a bit of resources back from those attacks with the raiders. Look how beasty that um, beastmaster is. <laughs> I didn't mean even to say that, but Todd's beastmaster. He's got Cadgar's gem of health and belt gi giant strength and even a scroller healing to keep himself uh. going. It's pretty nice. But uh, it's, it's Grubby. Yeah, I think Grubby should TP in here. He's going to lose all his burrows if he doesn't. But actually, I, it seems like he's going to go for the attack uh, on himself. I guess uh, maybe he's himself. thinking this might be worthwhile because if he can take this expansion down, he knows he's still got two other expansions going up. One's yeah. already up now, so maybe he can recover his gold loss but, in his main. Yeah, but Todd is moving out all his, uh, his units out of uh, Grubby's main base, so he's going to TP. And the summons are still going to do damage in Grubby's main base. And now That's he does really TP. Nice. I really like that style of play, that's yeah. very clever, thinking ahead there. Is he going to be able to keep this expansion though? Only two oh, peasants still repairing there now instead. And yep, Grubby manages to secure Oh, and is he going to get the peasant? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's so important. That delayed the um, reproduction of that expansion by such a lot. Oh and yeah, absolutely. I mean, now he's going to have to take care of these raiders though. Militia in there or sending peasants is going to be slow either way, so... 
That's but, a nice touch. Yeah, but Grabi lost quite a f quite a few units there, and Todd knows that he is uh, up by nine supply, and his army is full HP, and so he's heading straight over to Grabi's main base because he obviously wants this engagement now. Uh, he knows in a straight up fight right now, Grabi is going to be in trouble. Yep, those healing sounds need to get to work before he wants to engage in any more fights. He's not doing too bad hero wise. I mean, level 5 fast here. I could see, like, you know, the Shadow Wolf, so I can't remember what the level 3 version of the Wolves is, but they're powerful. I think Spirit Wolves. Spirit Wolves. Oh my goodness, Spirit Wolves. <laughs> yeah, if, they, if, they, if you sit some Spirit Wolves on some casters, they're going to yeah. do some fair bit of damage there. And it seems like Grubby, does he wanna, doesn't he want to engage? He's just going for. No, now he gathers his army. Oh, he's leaving it a bit late for a hit yeah. and run. It's it's really tricky for Grabby though, because he needs to win time for these expansions, but if he loses his uh, tier 2 buildings and his main, then well, what's he going to do? Grunts against casters? Yeah, I've tried that. It doesn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> so now he, now he goes for the TP. Uh, he's not bad position here, flanking him from the left-hand side to the right. He's trying to get himself back for the moment, maybe pick up some items from the shop, looks like it. Maybe get a decent shockwave or two in there before that Torrent Chief and loses all of his mana to those Spellbreakers. He's actually pulling back here, what do you think about that? Uh, well, this this army is really hit and run based and as you can see, Todd only has one heal scroll, so if Grabby can get a couple of uh, good chain waves in, then uh, yeah, Todd is going to get in some trouble with those casters, but also worth mentioning, Todd is not rebuilding his his expansion, so he feels like he can't afford to uh, get it one more time, and therefore, um, yeah, the pressure is uh, going to rise on him. Yeah. But in the meantime, he also killed all of the Europeans in Ravi's main base. Sounds like exactly what you're going for there. He's just sort of trying to apply pressure and win the game through that alone. And if he doesn't, yeah. then he's going to be in a lot of trouble. Grubby's just really trying to get through by the skin of his own teeth here. Just hit and run tactics, as you mentioned, with this army. He can't full up engage, but he can hit and run with those spells, shockwaves, chain lightnings, maybe a couple of ensnares to guarantee a kill on units that might otherwise run away. But this is still really rough, Grubby, because that Archmage is level 5, Beastmaster level 4, seem to be level 5. That's a lot of powerful summons, even when you have Spirit Walkers. Yeah, but uh, he has only mana for two dispels on the Spirit Walkers right now, so that's not a whole lot. And Todd is keeping his uh, casters above his army, and Tra Grubby is again trying to get in from the left side this time. Yeah, he's a game of cat and mice or something, he's just constantly running away, positioning himself nicely here. Lovely little uh, ensnare and chain lightning shockwave wow, there, does guarantee nice. a couple of kills. Sh oh, you can see those disenchants going off there, yeah. that is nice too. And now all the walkers are out of mana down. Grabby's entire army is slowed, but he still has a speed scroll, which I guess he will have to use soon because he's not going to be able to win the entire fight. That's it, he needs to wait as long as he can until he absolutely has to use it because once he's used it, he's going to be going back to being slowed for a very long time. Oh, there it is. Yeah. And that's I rough. guess that's that's really rough for Grub. He's got uh, 100 mana on one of the walkers, so he's got one dispel to work with. And uh, he's going to be chased by uh, Todd for uh, quite a while now, I guess. <laughs> yep, I've already said it before, but I think slow is really quite a broken spell, to be honest with you. It lasts way too long. It's like 60 seconds. That's ridiculous, really, when you think about it. Do you agree or do you disagree? Uh, actually, Are you I one of these people that thinks slow needs to be buffed? No, no, definitely not. Uh, by the way, in the meantime, Todd's yeah, still in um, Grubby's main base. Um, no, I think there's a critical timing against Orc in which um, the Orc has maybe one attack. Spirit Walker out and maybe two Dispels or so. And I don't think that slow is necessarily broken, but um, yeah, if the orc just um, doesn't have enough uh, enough mana on those walkers, uh, once the tier 2 push comes, then it can really hurt and, and feel overpowered. But I think in the late game, slow um, is just as good as it needs to be. Like in this situation, I don't really see uh, slow being overpowered. This is where I think that actually invisibility needs to be mo moved to tier 1 and slow is tier 2 or whatever, you know, like the next stage on. Grubby being forced to TP here after this engagement because he's not looking too strong versus this. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not really sure how uh, instant invisibility would affect uh, affect the game, but I think uh, we definitely some nice see, micro yeah, see a couple of wacky moves if that was available straight on tier 2. And by the way, Todd scouted both the expansions now from Grubby, so Todd knows exactly what's up. He knows uh, he is under pressure, he still has to waste a Puria army at the moment. Grubby's not that far behind in terms of actual overall unit count. 
So it's not like the game's over for him at the moment, but Todd looks like he's in a strong position since he has actually managed to bash down on the main of Grubbies quite heavily, and he's now obviously exploring and having fun with these expansions. Yeah, yeah Grubby is doing the best he can. He gets some money through Pillage. He cannot fight straight up, so uh, yeah, he's doing as much damage to Todd as he can, but as you can see, it takes such a long time for just this one Arcane Sanctum to go down and Todd in the meantime is just uh, taking down that expansion of Grubby. I feel like this is where the Tauren Chieftain, like Orc, needs an Archmage hero himself, don't they really? Because you're looking at that mana on him and he's like 84 out of 420, now he's getting battered by the Arcane Tower, so all that mana that he did build up, yeah. it's gone. <laughs> he really wants that mana to be useful. And, and Todd just tried to fake the TP with the Staff of Teleportation and Grubby just didn't fall for it at all. I like that. Very yeah, I, play there. I guess, um, yeah, he just, uh, as you mentioned earlier, knows the habits of Todd. Yeah. And also, he probably, at the um, top left uh, corner of the map, saw that um, Todd had the Staff of Teleportation in his inventory and that that was a possible move to do for Todd in the future. Now this is where it does get a bit rough for Grubby. He's underneath the 50 food cap, so he's getting full gold, but he's having to spend a lot just sort of on healing cells to repair himself, clarity up, you know, after these hit and run tactics. Yeah. Whereas obviously Todd, as mentioned before, like I say, with the Archmage, the Brilliance Aura, just kind of has that naturally burning through. He's got level 2 Brilliance Aura there, so he doesn't have to worry about mana issues quite so much. Yeah. But uh, Todd is doing a good job with his summons here at Grubby's expansion again, I and mean, it's just... The damage output, also against the Buros, is just ridiculously with only these uh, three summons. Yeah, I mean, it is crazy. They're both, they're all tanky, aren't they, really? Even the Quill Beast has got 600 health. Yeah. And, and the next. Doesn't the take next extra damage. Ah, oh, sorry. The next wave of uh, summons is now going into Grubby's main base, where there's still a little bit of gold, and uh, oh. in the meantime, Grubby catches one Sorceress here. I mean, the thing is that um, Todd basically has no reinforcement, so if Grubby can snipe all the sorceresses at some point, um, it's not looking, or it, it wouldn't look that bad for him anymore. Yeah, I mean, that's very yeah. observant. I mean, those summons themselves, you don't even need units, just throw the summons in there and they'll pretty much wipe out <laughs> bases. It's Ooh, crazy. The, ca the cast is a little bit out of position here, immediately yep. gets a nice chain wave in. Todd definitely got punished for it. This is one thing that does slightly hurt Todd, though, is because all these summons are miles away. He hasn't actually got so much of a bulk of his army with yeah. him, potentially. Yeah. And uh, wow, nice split on those casters here. Shockwave. Yeah, really missed out on most of them, but another couple of casts going down. And Grubby has done again really nice in this fight. Now he starts losing units. Two walkers going down, and he chooses to TP. Yeah, I think with what he was working with there, he did very well. It was good use of ensnare and fully focusing on those targets that he wanted to bring down, and he did bring them down. Uh, Archmage is level 6 though, so uh, hit and run is going to get a, let a lot harder for uh, Grubby right now. Yeah, I mean, I love the level 6, the ultimate of uh, Archmage, mass teleport. 24 units, this is time to start building steam tanks, surely! What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a bit hard to bring build two steam tanks in this game, but you know, I think would be nice. going going to tier three with uh, seventy two gold and I get a workshop <laughs> <laughs> and a blacksmith uh, blacksmith before that is gonna get a bit tricky for Todd. I think it's worth it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, he needs to start adding those steam tanks to his summons for like the ultimate base <laughs> expansion harass. Yeah. But yeah, the next wave of summons is just as you uh, mentioned is already coming in for the expansion. They're just everywhere. I'm looking at the moment they're in Grubby's main base. They're picking out so yeah. many peons. This is just even more experience. We might even see that level 6, uh, that Beastmaster hit level 6 eventually yeah. for Todd. Yeah. And um, yeah, Grubby in the base should be able to pick up quite a couple of militia as well though. Ah, his TC is out of mana. I like this but at the same time I don't because he's put himself in a really risky position. He's going to have to use a scroller town portal to get out and he used that scroller healing as well. So this is like money he's burning through here to get a few militia kills and a few towers. Was it really that worth it? I'm not sure me while uh, Todd uses his ultimate to the uh, bottom right expansion. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, he killed those towers. I'm not sure if uh, base kill is eventually going to be gonna become an option for Grubby. I mean, his uh, fast here could also reach level 6, but I think he might skill level 3 chain lightning. Yeah, I suppose. I, I mean, this is still good play oh, wow. from both. And I was just in Grubby's... Um, in Grabby's point of view, and at the top left, he wanted to build an expansion, but Todd's uh, Todd's footman actually blocked the spot, so uh, <laughs> he couldn't build there, and oh, that's, that's rather brilliant. unfortunate. That's very and, good. Yeah, now Grabby is out of gold income as well. His um, 
his expansion has gone down and he's TPing up to this invisible footman and he's gonna take down his peons as well. Yeah, this feels like such a rough game for Grubby. I mean, I would have given up a long time ago or just suicided <laughs> in one of those earlier fights without realizing that I should be hitting a run in the way Grubby style is. But he's forcing an engagement here at the moment and he's going straight in there, shockwave, oh, chain lightning. Sick, sick chain wave. I yeah. think three casts already have gone down. Those were a, bit, a little bit far up front. Spirit but uh, the taken first a lot of walk has also gone down from Grubby. He's in a good position actually here. The Raiders are all close up to the castles. They're all getting ensnared. Yeah. He's doing extra damage to those castles whilst he's able wow. to hit them. And there's only one sorceress left for Todd. And one source and no slow. Looks like Grubby and might be going down, but he always oh, has a town portal. Yes, yeah. He's so that much better at buying town portals than I am. The TC also survives barely. But that was nice by Todd. Uh, Grubby accidentally blocked his uh, farce here in. And at the left side, he had his own unit and moved it away and Todd just realized what's going on and quickly moved the water elemental there. Um, yeah, avoiding this um, this fast here to uh, get out of this round. Getting to a stage yeah, of the game where both players are getting a bit desperate for the gold, so even creeping is a logical yeah. step, just not only for items, but for cash. Oh, right. Robo the Magi Magic. plus six though. Oh my goodness, that's going to be so good. Extra damage, just more control for the Archmage. More summons, what do you think about those? <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna hurt Todd. Yes, he's he's done well with those summons, but he can have some more. Grubby's gold situation is looking a bit rough. Fifteen gold. Ugh. <laughs> what do you do about that? Well, uh, the issue is just for Grubby that he's only got uh, two spirit walkers remaining, and he doesn't have the brilliance aura, so uh, he's got two disenchants right now. If he doesn't use um, spirit link, and uh, yeah, Todd is just always gonna have mana with his archmage. Do you think but if he manages to get level 6 with the Tauren Cheating, his best bet is to simply just follow the human army and shockwave to high hell whilst he keeps the like the other units, the Farseer and such, to sort of um, try to defend versus summon attacks? You can always spare a couple of raiders or whatever for the Tauren Chieftain, mm -hmm. but the Tauren Chieftain can't really die if he's got full control I of it. I think the issue is that um, Todd would just walk to the very left side of the map and then use his ultimate to uh, grab his main base and would just get a fight without the TC. Yeah. Problem with that ultimate is it's so good you feel like the temptation to keep using it all the time. Even with this brilliance aura, you can see his mana is always sitting around like the hundred mark or something. He's never really quite got the full maximum mana count yet. Looks like these two are getting kinda close. But not quite whoops. close yet. Uh the whoops again continue harassing these uh long distance mining peasants of of Todd. So shadow wolves, that's what they is. They look quite happy, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's called Spirit Hawk on level 3. That's where I got the spirit from. Ah, uh, you're just mixing and matching, aren't you? So many yeah. summon heroes in this game. Archmage, Beastmaster, you know, your Farseer. What about the Tauren Chieftain? What can he summon? What should he summon? <laughs> Himself on level 6. Oh, that's true. Very good point. There you go. How is that? <laughs> Looks like there's a bit of an engagement here that Grubby is going to need to respond to unless he's going to try to maybe go for a and, something and, else. But and also, uh, Grubby only has five buildings in his main and two buildings in the bottom left, so he might actually have to take a base, base kill into consideration. Mm. I, I mean, it depends how much mana he's got in his heroes. He's, look at that Tauren Chieftain, he's got 420 mana. I mean, this is the time to go for it, surely, even with and the spellbreakers. Uh, and so he has a mana waves. portion. Yeah, and he's just walking in with his two heroes. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Todd has two invul potions on those heroes, no heal scrolls though. And Todd got the goal to build a second sorceress again. Ah, from, there we uh, go. Long distance mining and... Um, he needs more slow creeping. imbalance. Uh, but Grubby is closing in on those. Oh, he's really going to town on those castles. They're oh, not yeah, so protected anymore. And... Wow, Todd is just running out of magic damage and therefore he cannot uh, finish that Spirit Walker. So this hit and run style of Grubby is really starting to pay off at this point in the game where both players are basically really running out of gold and it's actually pretty damn even between the both of them. It's not as difficult as it was before where it felt like when Grubby had to hit and run, he was hit and running against odds. Yeah. Now it feels like he's in a good place to be. Yeah, as soon as that slow runs out on the on that raider, actually Grubby might be or should be able to uh, take a straight up fight. Mm. Just see, he also um, regenerated tons of mana on his spirit walker, so he should be able to take care of those summons if he wants to. He's just chucking these shock waves left, right, and center at this archmage. 
<laughs> gradually bringing the health down. The Keg Guard's Gemma health has actually been put in the Archmage because he's taken so much. Yeah. Yeah, Robe of Magi as well for the fast here, so that's lovely. He's going to be doing quite a bit of extra damage there. But he can't straight up br bring a fight against two water elementals. The water elementals are level 3 as well. They're like knights, basically, aren't they? <laughs> Not quite, but you know what I mean. They're like really uh, beasty. Oh, we call them water torrents in German. Water torrents or torrents? Turrets. You know, the strongest dog unit. <laughs> uh, torrents, yes. Yeah. Water torrents. I like it. The Tauren yeah. Chieftain's not happy about the humans taking away his Taurens. <laughs> it's like a bull. He has to keep control of all the pack. Oh, the Shadow Wolves just dancing around there with the Spellbreakers. Tapping here and there. You can actually get away with that because the Shadow Wolves actually do bonus damage to Spellbreakers because of their medium armor. So as long as he didn't lose the Shadow Wolves and give away experience. But it looks like he's definitely going for a much better target here, the Archmage. <laughs> Yeah, and Grubby, obviously, he has, he has such a good micro, he's not going to lose those uh, wolves. The one with 11 HP now Blaze moving away. But uh, in the meantime, Todd keeps sending uh, summons over and over again towards Grubby's base. So this is Todd's answer, basically, for Grubby's um, strength in hit and runs. It's his strength is now summon splits and such. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it seems quite legit, though, because those summons <laughs> are a force to be yeah. reckoned with when they're all together. Yeah. But Grubby's doing a pretty good job trying to split them up because the water elemental is just sitting there for a while getting confused. And that Farseer has been on two XP points away from level 6 for the past three minutes, I think. Uh, yeah, I know how that feeling is. It's horrible, but you think he's going to go for... Um, you would have thought so. It has to be Earthquake, surely. I don't know whether the players do in a situation no. like this. Actually, I don't on. think so. I think Grubby wants to... Still level 3 Chain Lightning? Yeah, yeah. Grubby um, can't win with base... Uh, base kill now because Todd is just going to kill his buildings faster if Grubby tries to, even with Earthquake. And Grubby has so many raiders, and with level 3 Chain Lightning and Shockwave... He just wants I to seal the deal, doesn't he, really? Yeah, he just, he just is going to go for the Archmage, most likely. I mean, yeah, the Archmage he... still has an invoke portion, though, but... Make sure he has very strong initial damage, and there he goes. Gets his level 6 with the Disenchant on the Quill Beast there. Yeah, and there you can see Grubby drains Chain Lightning. Aha! Let's see this level 3 Chain Lightning in action. See how you like that, Mr. Archmage. Well, actually, is he going for the Beastmaster here? Wow, there are those summons. But now the Dispair should come in, though. Oh, here we go. This is it. It's going to be basically permanently well, ensnared. I think he, he passes the Immo Yeah, he passes the Immo Potion to the Beastmaster. And now he's trying to run with the Archmage. Oh, that nuke. Oh, look at the damage Archmage. And the TC. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's not level 6 yet, so he can't quite risk it too much. But Archmage. The Archmage. Ooh. Down he goes. Yeah, down he goes. <laughs> and that Tauren Chieftain does manage to get away. The Beastmaster is on the chase, though. And is he it going to be enough? He needs one kill for level 6. And he's faster than the TC. The TC movement speed is fast, and the uh, uh, Beastmaster is very fast, so he will eventually catch up. Unless he gets ensnared. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Yo, oh, that is so gutting, that is. And that Tauren Chieftain selling whatever he can, maybe to pick up another invulnerability pot or something the, to get him out the Raider of the dies, the Beastmaster also gets level 6. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Very good point there. Everything was in it there. Wow. And Grubby and takes it. That seals the deal for Grubby. Very well played by both there. That was a crazy game. Um, it. Look at the gold that Grubby got over that as well. So Todd did a really good job considering the gold loss that he was currently uh, on. Uh, yeah. But it felt yeah. a lot of the time through the game that you know Grubby was actually sort of almost on the back foot there. But in fact, he really did well, just holding it up, hoarding up that gold. Yeah. Maybe that's where all the gold went. It's just the mana potions for the Tauren <laughs> Chieftain. Yeah, and clarities and and stuff, um, speed scrolls. Alright, well, thank you very much for watching. It's been a lot of fun casting with you. I train <sighs> Hume, <laughs> Andy, otherwise. So uh, if you guys are interested in seeing more casts from Andy himself, then you can do so at his channel. There'll be another link to that. I'm sure I'll put up when I get round to it, which will be up on the video. And uh, yeah, he covers all these kind of old uh, replays. Basically the epic kind of stuff that you really need to see at least once in your life with the Warcraft 3. It's been out a long time and you need to see the best of the best. And a lot of these older games like this 2008 one prove that case. Yeah, okay. So thanks for uh, watching. As Witty said, um, check out my channel if you liked. 
And also, thanks for uh, casting with me, Witty. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It went very and quick for 36 minutes, that one. Yeah, it was really tense and action-packed, and oh, yeah. uh, not many boring parts. Ah, loved it. All right, good. Anything else to say, or shall we sign it off? Uh, I think, um, yeah, I'm done talking for now, <laughs> and um, I hope I see you guys around. All righty. Well, thanks again, everyone, for watching. Click the like button, and uh, make sure to check out Andy's channel, like mentioned. Subscribe to both of us if you want to see more of this kind of content. And uh, we'll see you later. Take care.